Let's take a look at some of my Dustlin designs, which are really easy, solid patterns, all about texture and showing off one color of yarn. They're really, really easy, and I just love the combination of textures and stitch patterns. So I have a Dustlin sweater, shawl, hat, socks. You can be head to toe in all of these beautiful textured stitch patterns. So let's start with the sweater. I'm wearing a worsted weight sweater. This is the Dustlin sweater, seamless top down, and it's one color. You don't have to plan a 10 color palette. Just pick that one favorite color, which sometimes I think is harder than choosing like a five color shawl project. You can only choose one color. So make sure it's a really good color and something really beautiful and soft and nice to knit with. So I'm wearing this one in La Bien Aimee's Cori Worsted, which is a really beautiful heathered rustic yarn and it has a just a gorgeous stitch definition to it. And this green is the cocoa colorway. I love the lime because it's still bright and intense, but it's that bright color peeking through the shadowy gray heathered woolly yarn. So you get that like woolly neutral quality, that smokiness, but still a bright color punch. So you need anywhere between four to eight skeins, depending on your size. I used about six, maybe six and a half skeins for this size. And uh, there's nine sizes in the pattern. So do a little gauge swatch and see how it matches my sweater and pick your size. And I always recommend to choose a size for your Dustlin sweater that's a little bit bigger than your actual chest circumference. So if you're measuring your chest, pick a size that's like two or four inches at least bigger than your actual circumference. So that's about five to 10 centimeters bigger than your actual measurement. So it has a little bit of positive ease. If you like your sweaters extra fitted, then you can just choose a size that is your exact size, but then there's not gonna be any wiggle room on the sides. So that's my top tip for making sure a sweater is extra comfortable, is knitting a larger size than what is your actual chest circumference. I think I need to make another one of these later this year that's even more oversized. That would be really cozy. But uh, Dustlin sweater, it's for worsted or DK weight yarn. To me, those are pretty much the same. They're, they are different. Worsted weight is a little bit thicker, but the DK weight and worsted weight both will knit up to the gauge of 18 stitches recommended. 18 stitches for four inches, 10 centimeters is the Dustlin sweater. So DK and worsted weight yarns are great for that. And uh, La Bien Aimee Cori Worsted is a good one. We have a lot of these colors at Stephen and Penelope. So just pick one color and we have some sweater kits too picked out for you. So you could go to Stephen and Penelope and just pick a sweater kit and select your size. It has the number of skeins you need for that size already figured out for you and just pick your color and you're good to go. And Westwell Tandem is another good yarn that's really good for the Dustlin sweater and a lot of the other Dustlin designs because it's wooly, non-superwash, really shows off that texture. So when you're working with all these Dustlin stitch patterns, you don't wanna use super, super busy yarns where you don't see the texture. So if you have these crazy variegated speckled yarns, maybe save those for a solid sweater that's stuck in it or simple stripes. But for the Dustlin, there's lots of these little details of ribbing, moss stitch, diagonal texture. You wanna see those details so I definitely recommend some solid or heathered yarns for all those Dustland yarn choices. One of the newest Dustland patterns that's becoming part of this Dustland family is the cowl. It's really easy because all you have to do is knit the same stitch count in a tube and then you seam it together for this reversible double thick cowl. I did two sizes for the cowl. So this is the small size that's just like a little neck warmer. You can cover your ears while you're biking. And I seamed it. You're making a tube and then you seam the tube closed. I chose to seam the tube with a half twist. So it's like a Mobius style shape. But uh, you just seam the tube together, the cast on and bind off. And I put a little video tutorial in the pattern so you know exactly what type of seaming technique I did. And the large size is more of an infinity, infinity cowl. You can knit this design with sport weight yarn, which is what I did. I used Ulysse, Dorerum Natura Ulysse. I'll link to this yarn in the description box down below because it's one of my must try wool yarns. 
I love this yarn so much because it's that magical blend of being spongy and soft, but still having that like rustic wooly quality to it, if that makes sense. You like really feel that sheepy crunch, but in a really soft, cloudy way. So it's that really magical blend where it's robust and really lofty and has this buoyancy to it, but it's still soft. So some of those really soft yarns are just kind of drapey and limp and don't, don't have as much life. But this yarn, it's non-superwash. It is amazing for cables and textured stitches. And it's a really good price for a ball of yarn. They come in 50 gram balls and uh, yeah, I just, I just love it. All the colors are so harmonious and heathered. So I chose this subtle cream beige and this heathered green for my samples. And the whole color palette is just so harmonious and gorgeous. And for the bigger cowl, you'll need a few more balls of yarn to knit this. And uh, it's the same technique where you knit a tube, seam it together, but you just keep knitting more pattern repeats than the little version. So you can wear it draped or I always wrap it double thick. So it's really easy. It doesn't fall off. If you don't like wearing the shawls with the ends and how to wear the shawls and you don't want them to like fall off, then knit a cowl. It's really practical and uh, great and easy to knit. So that's with sport weight. You could knit this with fingering weight, definitely, but it will just be a little more narrow, I think. So if you're knitting with fingering weight, I would probably go down one or two needle sizes and just know that the width of your cowl will be a little bit smaller, but I designed it to be pretty wide to begin with. So even if you're knitting a fingering weight version, I think it's still gonna be plenty big. Just make sure you like the feeling of the fabric and the length you just customize by adding another pattern repeat texture. So that's the Dustlin cowl. And uh, going back to some DK and worsted weight, we have the Dustlin shawl. This is all about texture, easy semicircular knitting. You start at the top and knit your way down with about four skeins. If you have four skeins of DK worsted weight yarn, that should be plenty of yarn to knit this big size. And it features the same stitch patterns, DK worsted weight, pick one color, and it's a really beautiful, big semicircle shawl shape. All right, we've got our sweater, our body covered. We've got our drapey shawl, our practical cowl. Your toes might be a little bit cold. So this came out last year, the Dustlin socks. And again, the same stitch textures, but we get to use fingering weight yarn. So all you need is one skein of fingering weight sock yarn, and you get these beautiful socks. What I love about this sock is it's really easy to memorize. So as you're doing the stitch pattern repeats, you don't have to look at the pattern row by row, round by round the entire time. It's really uh, easy to grasp what's going on in the stitch changes. It's garter ridges are between every texture and you really get to see that stitch pattern really crisply with this fine gauge. And I used Mominoki Sock Fine 4-ply for these socks. That's one of my favorite sock yarns because it has a lot of solid and semi-solid colors. So it's really good for those graphic striped projects and solid textured projects. And it's one of those sock yarns that's durable with the nylon content, but it feels really velvety soft. So it's really round, plump, soft, but strong with the nylon. So I think these socks are gonna last a really long time. And yeah, it's one of my go-to sock patterns where there's a little detail to keep you interested, but it's still like just one step above a plain vanilla sock. You get to do something a little bit fun. So if anyone requests socks and you like to do gift knitting, the Dustlin socks are a good one to go to because there's not a lot for anyone to complain about. <laughs> there, how can you not like this? There's not any fussy details or yeah. So if someone just wants a plain pair of socks, make it fun for yourself and add a little texture, okay? They're not even gonna notice. They're just gonna wear them and be like, oh, thank you, thank you for the socks. And you'll be like, thank you for not noticing all the hard work I put into it. So they're not too much work for you to do, just that little texture. But if it's a gift sock, yeah, play it a little bit safe and these will be, I think, good for anybody. Anyone would like these. So those are the Dustlin socks with just one skein of fingering weight. 
There's also some leg warmers and some mitts you could do with fingering or sport white yarn. So those are fun little accessories. And the last thing, okay, now we can really go like head to toe, is the Dustlin hat. So this is maybe a good very first one to do because it's the quickest project out of all of them with only one skein of DK or worsted weight yarn. You'll have a little bit of leftovers and it has that little bit of slouch. So you can wear it all slouchy styled or you can fold the brim and have a double thick brim because the stitch patterns are reversible. We've got garter stitch and some moss stitch going on. So all those textures look really good on the wrong side as well. So this hat I knit with Westwool Tandem in the pebble colorway. It's a really light heathered gray. And this is the green olive. I mean, a very green theme. I could wear all the greens together. That would be really fun. So this is the green olive in Westwool Tandem. This hat is knit a slightly looser gauge. So I usually like my hats to be a little more on the firm side. I think they usually just last a little bit longer that way and don't stretch out as much. So this one's a little bit bigger, a little bit looser, and this one's a little bit more firm. So that Dustlin hat is a really good chance to just get used to the stitch patterns and get used to that yarn and needle choice that you like. And then you could have a good idea of what fabric you want for your Dustlin shawl or your Dustlin sweater. So really quick, really easy. One of my favorite hats that I designed years and years ago, probably like nine or 10 years ago, in one of my first little booklet collections, and I didn't know that years later I'd have a whole outfit from head to toe in this Dustlin stitch pattern. But uh, this was the inspiration that started it all. And I just love recycling and going back to those original designs and finding new ways to present them. So those are all the Dustlin patterns that are available now. There may be some in the future. If you have some ideas what should be Dustlandified next, I'd love for you to comment. I'm already thinking a cardigan, but what else am I missing? Little doggy sweaters, or maybe a big, cozy, like drapey, slouchy wrap cardigan thing, like a jacket cart, you know, one of those like really cozy on the couch jacket cardigans, like really oversized, like a blanket with sleeves. <gasps> what would we call that? Like a Dustlin couch snuggy thing? I don't know. Let me know what I should make more with this Dustlin stitch pattern and I'll put all those links down below. And uh, thanks for watching these. I'm gonna make some more tutorials soon so you can check out some more yarn inspiration videos. And if you wanna learn some new things for the new year, we'll learn some new knitting techniques coming soon. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.